lots lots of things come into it. You know, uh, uh, you are you have drug problems. You got a drug problem. You can coordinate coordinate your ass. You know, you coordinate yourself till you're blue in the face. But you got to get money for drugs. You know? I mean, <laughs> so I mean, thank goodness. Personally, I never had, you know, uh, a substance abuse problem beyond drinking beer too much every now and again. But, uh, you know, I worked with people who, who do develop, who have developed those, you know, that kind of problem. And it, it's, you know, it's a downward spiral. And, and, you know, you get into criminal behavior very quickly because it's hard to, hard to get money otherwise. So, anyway, it'd be nice. It would be nice get their necks working better and, you know, they don't have to use drugs. But um, I, I imagine out there in the Alexander community, that, that's an interesting study. How many people in the Alexander community have substance abuse problems? What, what's, your, what's your impression? Less than usual, you know. I, it seems to me that most, and more, is that because of the Alexander technique or because of the sort of person that's attracted to the Alexander technique? Do you know what I mean? It's, yes. Yeah. You know, it just might, the Alexander Technique just might attract clean living, straight shooting people, you know? Good God fearing folk. <laughs> <laughs> so, where are you from? Uh, I'm Canadian, basically. Uh, I was born in the UK, in Scotland, and lived, uh, immigrated to, Canada, to the States when I was two. And then moved up to Montreal when I was seven, and so I've lived most of my life up uh, up here in in, uh, in Montreal, uh, except for the time that I spent in, you know, doing my training and a couple of years after it, because I sort of hung around a little bit. Do you have a typical Canadian accent? I don't think so, um, but there isn't a typical Canadian accent. My wife is from Saskatoon, and they, they their accent is a little bit different than if you were from Halifax or from. Newfoundland or um, from the West Coast, you know, it's a little bit like the States, you know, you don't, uh, somebody from Arkansas is not going to talk the same way as somebody from New York or somebody from, you know, um, uh, Massachusetts, you know, so we've got it quite a bit. So my accent's a little bit of a dog's breakfast, I think. Yeah, I'm trying to, I was always trying to work it out. Yeah. <laughs> And it left me befuddled. I couldn't. Yeah. Well, I think I've sort of picked up bits and pieces over the years from where I've lived. And, you know, I, I didn't, you know, some I had some people in the class from, you know, from the States who all of a sudden developed Oxford accents or their version of them when they were doing the training. And I consciously made an effort not to do that. But I know I picked up expressions. Being in London for all those years, I picked up English expressions, yeah, which I use almost unconsciously now. Um, uh, you know, and I sort of switch back and forth between, you know, because I'm there a couple times a year, and um, you know, you just get along better there if you use the right expressions for things, and um, you know, so you you ask where the where the lift is if you want to find it. <laughs> <laughs> with any degree of alacrity, you know? Yeah. Uh, so, yeah. Why do you live in Montreal? I have family here. I kind of grew up here. Montreal is a, 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 really, a really great city, except winter's a little bit long. But um, it's, uh, it's a bilingual city. Uh, my kids are both in French schools. So my daughter, who's three, is already, you know, is already bilingual. My son, who's nine, has been in French school since he was in daycare. So I really like the multi, the um, fact that um, people here speak two languages. It's quite European in flavor. Um, and as I said, my family's here. My uh, my parents who are both still alive are here. I've got a brother and sister here. Um, so I am... Um, I think that's probably the strongest pull. If um, you know, if at some point I moved, I uh, I don't know where I would live. I I really like living living in Europe. I really enjoyed that. I like the west the west coast here. You know, um, California definitely has a certain appeal. Um, 
but I guess this is home. If you were made czar of the Alexander community, what changes would you institute? Uh, <laughs> hmm. I'd, I'd say that running had to be part of every training school, every training process. Everybody had to learn how to run. You couldn't get your, uh, your certificate until you'd run a 10K. <laughs> Well, there you go, half the teachers. And you'd have to do that once a term for your entire training. Boy, that sharpened people's awareness a bit, wouldn't it? Yeah. <laughs> but I'll tell you, they'd be fitter, and um, there'd be a different attitude about movement, and there might be even a different attitude about exercise, which is a, the, another bugaboo, you know? It's like, uh, you know, get over this thing about exercise, you know? There's nothing wrong with being strong. And thinking up is not, it's not enough. So, yeah, I do something like that. You know, you either have to run 10, 10K or bench press, uh, bench press your weight. <laughs> 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 or squat twice your weight. There you go. So, one of those three every term. Hang on one second. <laughs> 